Welcome to the world of containers, where developers simply pack up its application with all its important components like libraries and dependencies, which make the deployment quick and easy with enhanced security. Containers are easy to scale, but scalability is an operational challenge. Suppose you, if you have 10 containers and 4 applications, it becomes difficult to manage the deployment and the maintenance of the container and it becomes much more complicated if we will going to increase more containers and services with container orchestration tool like docker swarm it makes our task very very easy it controls and automate lot of the task such as provisioning and deployment of containers redundancy and availability of containers scaling up or removing containers to spread applications load evenly across host infrastructure moving of containers from one host to another if there is shortage of resources in a host or if a host dies allocation of resources between containers it also provide external exposure of services running in the container with the outside world with the help of port mapping load balancing of service discovery between the containers then health monitoring of containers and host and also at last configurations of an application in relation to the containers running in it so it automates a lot of tasks and here in this course you will going to learn that how you can automate all this kind of task with container orchestration so See you in the class. Hi and welcome. Before creating the cluster of Docker engine in a swarm mode, we required at least three Linux hosts in which Docker is installed and also able to communicate with each other over a network. So in this lesson, we're going to create three Linux hosts with the help of Docker machine. First of all, I'm going to just write a simple Docker machine command to create my manager host. Okay. So what is Docker machine? Docker machine is a tool for provisioning and managing the Dockerized host. Dockerized host simply means a host with a Docker engine. For the first time, when you are going to create your docker machine it will take time so for that time period let me introduce some of the important key points related to docker machine so this is a uh, docker docs you will find the information related to docker machine okay in the product manual section you know very well that docker recently introduced this docker desktop for mac as well as windows version where you will find lot or lot features but in case you want to create multiple worker machine you still require this docker machine okay for using this docker machine on mac system you need to use the driver virtual box but if you're using the windows version of docker desktop you will require that hyper v driver okay if you're using with window you will require Microsoft Hyper-V for virtualization. But if you are using Oracle VirtualBox into your Windows system, then you have to shut down your Hyper-V capabilities because they are not able to run simultaneously. Okay, so if you are going to create the multiple local machines on your Windows system using Oracle VirtualBox, you need to shut down your Hyper-V capabilities. Okay. So these are the things which you, you must know before jumping into the Docker Swarm, okay? And if you're using Docker Desktop for Mac, Mac uses this HyperKit, a light version of Mac OS virtualization, but there is no Docker machine driver for it. So you still require this Oracle VirtualBox. So if you're using with Mac, you need Oracle VirtualBox. If you're using with Windows system, then you will require that Hyper-V capabilities. Okay. So these are the basic commands related to Docker machine. 
you need to use this docker machine create then you have to put the driver and all will going to create the machine okay and uh, you will find lot of lot information in this manual now let me check what is the progress of the creation of my first host the manager host okay so it is now created so this is how i have created a manager host using this docker machine command in my next lesson i'm going to create two more nodes which you can call them as a worker as in my whole service of docker swarm there will be one manager and two worker to create the three node cluster where i'm going to perform various actions and manage lot of operations in the swarm mode okay so see you in my next class hi and welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can use this docker machine to create a manager node now in this lesson i'm going to create some more nodes and then create a cluster or docker engine into a swarm mode so let's start so when you will going to run the docker machine create command it will do, do some kind of pre-checks then it will going to create a machine you know very well at the time of using any kind of virtualization software like vmware workstation or oracle virtualbox you need a iosu file then it will going to create a machine with the that with that operating system of which iosu file which you have provided during the installation time similarly when you're going to create the host the linux host using this docker machine you will still need a kind of iosu file to create uh, operating system that is boot to docker now this boot to docker is archived now by the owner now you can do you can't do any kind of changes into this github repository as it is depreciated now which because it is now replaced by the another kind of technology which is wsl okay i will going to discuss this wsl later on section let me show you that uh, two operating system which i have downloaded from microsoft store one is ubuntu lts and another one is red hat lts so these are two operating systems which i have downloaded from microsoft store just like you can download any kind of software and just install on your system similarly i have also downloaded them and installed on my system so this wsl which stands for windows subsystem for linux is another kind of technology and which is on the great demand because suppose if you want to run some kind of linux commands into your windows system then you have to use this wsl which uses the power of hyper v and allows you to run the linux commands and linux capabilities into your windows system so this is something else and uh, you'll find lots of wsl which are very popular like ubuntu lts is one of them and uh, red hat lts is also a very popular wsl system all the system all the wsl systems are basically a version of linux kernel like ubuntu red hat fedora centos this all kind of lin operating system which having this linux kernel you will be able to run on your windows system with the help of wsl okay let me skip this wsl technology for some time let me introduce and learn more about boot to docker boot to docker is lightweight linux distribution which is specifically made to run docker containers and this it completely runs from your ram and the best thing is it is very small in size just 45 mb and it boots very very quickly okay the features of boot to docker is that docker is pre-installed and you can just use boot to docker and ready to use the docker things and it supports virtualbox vmware zen server and many other vm guests and uh, you can also add the disk into it and there's sss keys persistence into this boot to docker so there are a lot of things which you will get in this boot to docker iso 
If you want to learn more about Puto Docker, just go to this GitHub repository and you will find lots of lots of information. You, if you want to use this Ubuntu Docker, you, you have to just use SSH and the name of your machine and put the username and password which is given here. So if you want to learn more about Ubuntu Docker, you can just visit this GitHub page where you will learn and get more of Ubuntu Docker things. Now my worker one machine is provisioned with Ubuntu Docker which I have discussed right now. And once it will be provisioned, it will just going to start my Docker machine. So this is the basic things which you must know while creating your Docker machine. One is your WSL, one is your this boot to Docker and uh, many other things which are very important. In my next lesson, I will be discussing some more depth version of Docker machine and uh, will create another working node our worker too because we will going to do perform all docker swarm things into three cluster node so till now we have created one manager node and one worker node let me check it out using this docker machine ls command and you will find your two docker machine with their ips and with their status so for till now keep learning and keep moving ahead Hi and welcome back. In my previous lesson, I have shown you that I have created one manager node and one worker node. Now I am going to create another worker node and the process will be same. We will going to use Docker machine and just hit that create command with the driver Hyper-V. So let's do it. So I have used that command. That previous command docker machine create hyphen driver then given the name of driver hyper-v and the name of the machine so till now we have two workers two node actually one is manager and one is worker now the thing which I'm going to discuss here is virtual switch manager so what is virtual switch manager and why do we need this virtual switch manager because when you are using Hyper-V capabilities and creating lots of lot virtual machine then there should be a network so that they can communicate with each other to have the communication between the multiple virtual machine you need that kind of stuff which is virtual switch manager let me show you how you can create your virtual switch manager and where you will get that option for it you have to open hyper Win manager and there will be a lot of options will be there regarding hyper v settings and from there you can import virtual machine or rather you can create any one of virtual machine even you can also if you can also configure your hyper v settings from there there are a lot of things where you will find here in this Hyper-V Manager dashboard then there is settings for disk also and there is one option is coming that virtual switch manager so there will be a lot of things and a lot of options here you can utilize these options and do whatever you want to do with your Hyper-V settings the only task which I open which I need here right now is to create one virtual switch network but I have already created so I'm just going to show you the path from where you can create your own virtual switch manager see there's one virtual switch manager it's coming docker and so on things blah blah this is the virtual switch manager which I have created and there's one option is coming new here once you will going to click on new then there will be one prop will be come and we have to fill out some of the options there and your virtual switch manager will be defined one of the virtual switch so that you can have a communication between different virtual machines so this is there will be three options i have chosen the first one the external one and using that option you have to just give the name of your 
virtual storage manager and then you can use that name at the time of your creating your docker machine because it's this is a kind of a virtual machine actually having a different ips so this is very important to have this virtual switch while working uh, with docker machine so it uses the switch docker virtual switch as you can see on my screen it is showing that and now my another worker node is going to be created it, it as it is at last stage it is setting up all the configurations on the remote demo and uh, now it is just yeah so this is my new worker node let me show you docker machine ls and here you will find three machines running one is manager and one is worker one node and worker two node with their state and their ips in this way we have completed our first task which is to initialize a node a cluster of docker engine for swarm mode okay so here we have created one manager node a master node actually and two slaves node which will be act as a worker node and now in my next lesson we're going to use three nodes to make our hand dirty with docker swarm so for till now keep learning and keep moving ahead see you in my next class hi and welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create the linux host now we are going to create a docker swarm swarm just simply means a cluster of docker engines which you can collectively known as a docker swarm okay so for it you need to first ssh into all your three nodes you have to just simply just write docker hyphen machine then write ssh and the name of your docker machine which is manager one okay and it will took time and make sure your docker daemon is running okay and if it's not running then it will create a problem okay now do the same process in my in this another node docker machine ssh worker one and then on the third machine docker machine ssh worker two as you can see now it's lo logged into my docker machine which we created earlier the name is now changed the host name actually now it is showing docker at the rate manager one docker at the rate worker one docker at the rate worker two let me check it out just type host name to confirm that you are successfully logged into your docker machine or not yes we did it now let me clear the screen on all of them now i'm going to use docker swap init command keep one more one point in your mind that if you're using docker desktop then you don't need to give that advertise ADDR flag okay but if you're using docker machine in my case we are using docker machine then we need to provide the ip of the manager so just type ip config so to get the ip of the manager which is 192.1.1 so just clear this thing now type docker swarm space in it and you have to give the flag advertise hyphen addr and the name of and the ip of the manager which we copied okay now it will going to make this node as a manager for our docker swarm i given the name of docker machine manager worker one worker two so that we could not get confused okay so now the manager is now become actual manager okay you you need to use this init command to make particular node as a manager okay and you, they will find some kind of tokens is there this token is to create your another node as a worker so once you have pasted this token into my worker one node there is a message 
now this node join as a worker okay now uh, do the same thing in the second worker node now once you have done with this thing just type docker node ls command to view your host and uh, you will find the availability is there active and there is an option for leader also we will be going to discuss each and everything in detail okay so for till now keep learning and keep moving ahead hi and welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you today how you can initialize your docker swarm now in this section i am going to discuss about two most important commands of docker swarm one is docker info and one is join token so let's get started this docker info will give you a wide range of informations regarding your docker installation informations about kernel version number of containers and images and lot of many things let me show you each of them here as you can see on my screen i have just run the docker info command in my manager node see lot of informations are coming around like there are zero containers running power stop these are different flags of the container then there is a number of images showing it which is also zero the storage driver which i'm using that is overlaid too and uh, what are the plugins are there in this docker node like what are the networks which you can use swarm is active right now this is my node id this is a manager node that is why it is showing through there then there is a cluster id is given number of managers are also listed and the number of nodes total nodes including manager as well as workers which is three and also there's uh some of the snapshot is also given hardware period is five second and this is the node address the ip address of manager 192.168.1.8 and also displaying the docker version containerized version init version run c version and the kernel which we are going to use which is boot to docker and the type of os is linux and the total memory size which is 909.6 mb and so on things which i you can see here and see on my all the nodes you can see that docker version gives the same docker version and i have not installed docker in all of them it is pre-installed because boot to docker has that capability has this feature okay now you can see there's a name is also displaying the provider the driver which i have used while creating docker machine hyper v is also showing there and the product license which i am using is it is community engine okay and the same information which i have shown you in my manager node the same information will be in this worker node but it is not manager because that is showing false there because it is a worker node okay so here in this docker info you will get lots of lot of information and which is very important because you must know that what kind of operating system is there on your node and what is their capability and their features okay in case if you want to change the configuration you will be able to change i'm going to discuss each of them later on this learning series now i'm going to discuss another command which is docker swap join token I've shown you already and also used this join token command to add workers into docker swarm when I first initialize that manager node and it gives the option that join token command for worker see suppose you have lost that thing and you forget the token you can get it from here now when you going to put this manager after join token you will get another token through which you can add manager node into your docker swarm just like a worker were added you can use this token to add manager into it so this is all about docker info command and docker swarm join token command in my next 
lesson we're going to learn some more commands of docker swarm and manage the cluster hi and welcome back in this lesson i'm going to tell you about docker services so to deploy any kind of application when you are using docker engine in swarm mode you need to create a service service is basically the image for a microservice of uh, any larger application suppose if you want to run that ping command in your ubuntu os or a small version of linux like busybox or alpine and there you want to run the command ping www.google.com this is kind of a task or you can say a service and you wish to run into a distributor environment so what you need to do you just need to create a service and and then you have to specify the container image in our case we'll be using either busybox or alpine a uh, image a kind of image it is and then we need to provide the command which you want to execute inside that running container like ping www.google.com and you can also define more options while creating the services like you can provide the port where the swarm makes the service available outside the swarm suppose you want to execute any kind of task outside the swarm then you need to provide the ports you have to do port mapping okay we will also do a lot of stuff like port mapping and other things uh, in later on series and other than that you can also add the number of replicas of that image to be run in the swarm suppose you want to run this ping www.com and into five containers then you need to provide this replica flag okay and if you want to add any kind of network you can also add them like overlay network is one of the famous network and i must say that when you are working with docker swarm then you need to use this overlay network so that the images which are going to be created the services they can communicate with each other with the help of all in network okay so in this lesson i will just going to create a simple docker services with some options and later on we will going to add some more options so let's begin so the first thing which i will do i will going to list containers which will going to create it and add watch at the prefix so that it will going to give the list in the real time so let me do this thing in all the three nodes watch docker container ls watch docker container ls okay now what i'm going to do using the manager node let me stop it for a while so, here I'm going to create the service, a small service actually. The task of the service is to execute a ping command. Just write docker service create and you need to provide the image name. Okay, like I'm using busybox here. And then you need to give the command which you want to execute. Let's try it. ping there. You can also ping your master node as well. So let me remove this. And just write I have config to get the IP of master node. You need to look for H0 where you will get the IP of master node. Yeah. I have copied that IP many things were copied okay here it is let me copy this ip and paste it here and then i'm going to write the docker service create command docker service create hyphen d hyphen d simply means 
that this service will going to run at the background okay so you need to provide this hyphen d flag and the name of your image which is busybox and the command ping and the ip of your manager node so this is how i have created simple services and if service is created successfully you will get the service id so this is a watch docker container which i told you before so this container is running on manager node only as there's no replicas only one image one instance will be created and that instance is running at manager node so this is the id the name the random name which is given to the service and the total replicas is one out of one the image name is busybox so this is simple demonstration that how you can create docker service hi and welcome back in this lesson we are going to learn about port mapping it is very important to know about port mapping suppose you have created your container and also running up your services but it is not accessible to the outside world so what you will do because by default when you're going to create or run a container using docker create or docker run command it will not going to publish any of its port to the outside world to make a port available to the services outside your docker swarm or docker world then you need to use this port mapping so let me show you some examples to understand that how you can port map so that you can access your services or application outside the world here you can see hyphen p8080 colon 80 simply means it will going to map tcp port 80 in the container to port 8080 on the docker host and these are some more examples here hyphen p and there is ip is there and also the tc port 80 okay this is the host ip basically so in this way you will be able to create a firewall rule which will going to map a container port to a port on the docker host okay so let in this lesson we're going to just going to use this hyphen p which simply means publish and uh, so that you, you can access your service outside the world so here we go so i'm just going to simply create a new docker service or nagging server simply let's just write docker service create hyphen d then give hyphen p and then give the port 8080 call an 80 where 8080 port is our published port where we will get the service and 80 is the port for the container and i'm just mapping it with my 8080 port of my host machines ip you can access this container using your manager ip as well as your worker nodes ip just simply write down the ips of any of your node and just give the port which is 8080 and you will find an welcome page of nuggings okay so this simply shows that you have successfully port map your container and through which you can access it from the outside the world now let me check it out with different ips available in the docker swarm like you can access it with your worker node ip as well as your manager node ip so this is how this work the port mapping work okay so now i'm just going to remove this newly created service the only purpose to create this nuggings is to show you that how you can do port mapping nuggings is an open source software you can use them into your project if you if you want some kind of reverse proxying or catching or load balancing like thing then you need to use this nuggings server now i'm going to use another command 
of docker service which is rm to remove this service so just simply write docker service and then rm and the id of the service you can even write the full id but in short form you can just pick the two letter of your id of any kind whether you are working with here i'm working with service so just you need to use the two letters of service id but in case you want to remove the containers then you can pick the two letters of container id so it is very simple to do that now you can see this nuggings open page is not coming around that simply means that service which i've created right now is now deleted hi and welcome back in this lesson we're going to learn about labels and uh, how to add them into your swamp node label is simply a key value pair which is stored in the form of string and you can use this label as a metadata so that you can describe the nodes which are present in your swamp like uh, you can describe then what are the the role of that particular node what is the reason and what kind of disk is used with that node like suppose in role you can add like development qa production testing etc and in reason you can put us eu means Euro european union and many other reasons and also you can add like this node consists of sgg kind of disk or ssd kind of disk okay and once you label your node now you can add deployment constraint into your service so that whenever you're going to create a service it will going to run on the specific node with a specific label okay so here in this lesson you're going to learn that how you can create the labels how you can you remove the labels and how to use that labels when you are just creating a docker services so here we go so the first thing which i'm going to do is to create a label a label i already told you it is a form of key value okay so you need to give the label in such manner only so here env which means environment is my key and the development is my value okay so it is the kind of dictionary you know and yeah at last you need to give the name of the node name so for for a while i'm just giving the environment development for my worker one and testing environment for my worker two okay so it will be very simple for me that what kind of changes i just want to do in my development node or what kind of changes i want to do in my testing node okay so you can easily change your specification and do some kind of customization on the basis of label label is very useful because it is a metadata it gives you a extra power to you to handle the nodes of docker okay so i'm just not going to remove the um, labels which are i've created right now okay so okay i think that multiple um multiple ids will not work here so just simply okay i'm just going to do docker node update and then help to get the extra information about how to to do remove the label let me check okay hyphen hyphen label okay all the four options i've already discussed let's yeah okay you need to give the name one by one i was just trying for the first time that can we do multiple removal of label at a time so it will not work you need to give each id of your node one by one and then it will going to remove from there okay so you can see on my visualizer the label which i have added is now removed okay but uh, in this 
lesson i also i also have to show that how you can use this label while creating the services so i'm just going to create once again the label for my worker one uh, development okay now i'm just going to create a service so the only task is here uh, to create a docker services in such a way that the services which will be going to be created will be only be running on the worker one okay so you just need to give the constraint option there and inside it you just need to give the name of the label which you put it down okay so so just simply write no dot labels and then you need to provide the key and key value and uh, and the command will be the same which we did earlier just put hyphen d here and how many replicas you, if you want here i'm just doing uh, creating only one services so just uh, remove that section that replica one just write up alpine the image name and the command which you want to execute there okay so you can see there are only two containers were running on my worker one but after executing this command because of constraint the service which will going to create it will only run on worker one okay as you can see the services which i have created right now is only running on worker one because of the constraint which i have put it there okay you can also use the constraint of uh, roles or anything else but i've added the label there extra metadata into that node so i just use that one okay so this is very 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 easy thing which you can do there okay suppose if you want to add the replicas there then we find you okay so you can see it is also work for the my testing one also in this manner you can use this labels and constraint to specify the service where to run how to run them and with lots of configurations i hope you understand the use case of labels and the metadata okay so for till now keep learning and keep moving ahead hi and welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can use the constraint with labels but now in this lesson we are going to understand that how you can use the constraint for the roles suppose you want to run some kind of services on worker node only or some kind of services on manager node only okay so just remove all that labels kind of thing there and just add role there and role equal equal to this right manager some services which you want that they should be run on manager only such like uh, for health check or like docker swarm visualizer these services which you only want to be run on manager node so just give this constraint with role option so what will happen that if the we're going to restart the services or we do whatever any kind of thing the services which will be again run up on the manager node only okay so it is very important like when you i told you that when you want to execute some kind of services only that specified node then you can use this constraint with role okay i hope you understand how to deal with it so for till now keep learning and keep moving ahead hi and welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create a docker service now in this lesson i will do the same thing but this time we're going to add the replica flag so let's do it 
the first thing which i will do i will going to show you the services which i have created in my previous lesson for it you have to just run this command dark or service ls here you will get the id and the name and the modes and lots of information there and then i'm going to use the first two letters of the service id and inspect my service here we'll get the id's version at what time it is created the image description what co command i'm executing with it and uh, how many replicas are there as it is showing the one replica now i'm going to add more replicas into this service either you can change the configuration of current service or you can even create a new service i'm just going to create a new service with replica flag for it you need to just write the same thing which i did earlier just write docker service create and hyphen d and the name of your image but before it you have to add this replica flag and provide the numbers or replicas which you want in my case i'm just adding seven replicas in the name of your image and the command which you want to execute it's better to execute the earlier command adding this replica flag because you need to find out that ip again so just add 7 there and execute it it will take time because 7 replicas are large in number now I'm just going to see the new services created right now. Now just use this watch docker container ls. You'll find that three containers are running on my manager node. First was which I created earlier and two containers are running in my second node and three containers are running on worker 2. So total 3 plus 2 5 and 5 plus 2 7 so the replicas which i have given is running on all three nodes so this is how replica work okay hi and welcome back in this lesson we will going to learn about scalability so why do we need scalability and why it is considered as one of the important features of container orchestration tool like kubernetes and docker storm as well and other tools as well the answer is very very easy and very simple let me explain with you a simple example suppose you have built an e-commerce website at beginning the traffic was very low because you don't have too much customers but because of your superb deal your traffic's become triple and you need to handle the additional load so for it you need to scale and suppose due to some kind of conditions and situations where there's low traffic on your website then also you need to scale down so this docker swarms gives the gives you both the features scaling up and scaling down so here in this lesson we're going to learn that how you can scale up and scale down with docker swarm so let's begin first of all we need to list the number of services which are running on the container right now so for it you just need to run this command docker service ls here you can find a service with name funny violent with tw id having only one replica so what i'm going to do i'm just going to scale up this service for it you just so simply write docker service scale and then the service id and the number of instance which you want to create so suppose i just want to create only five instance till now you can see on node one funny villani is running up on only one service is running up so what i'm going to do i'm just going to scale this service to five so what will happen four new instance will be created as you can see on your screen one newly instance created on node one 
on node 2 as well one newly created instance there and on node 3 there is two newly created instance of one new line is there so this is how you can easily scale up your services now when you will going to list this it will going to show that there are on five replicas of this service okay you can even use this replica flag but you need to specify them at the time of creation in case you don't know uh, how much load will be there so you just given only one there but in case the load is high and you need to scale then you can use this scale command to scale up your service now as you can see five out of five is running right now now i'm going to scale down the service so you can see that only one instance is running on manager one node only so this is how i have scale up the service as well as scale down the service okay hope you understand how you can scale and scale down the docker services it is one of the key features of container orchestration tool and we're going to learn some more features of docker swarm on later part of the section hi and welcome back there is one question for you in the last lesson you have seen the purpose of giving replicas flag during docker service creation it will just going to run the multiple instance of specified docker container now the question is if you have deleted the container running on xyz node or the node becomes offline due to certain reasons then what will happen the answer is very simple that if you're given the replicas number to seven and you have deleted two of them it will going to run again okay in case the node is offline then also that replica will run on another node okay let me show you here in this node there are two containers are running let me remove them yeah if you get this kind of message that simply means that you have to stop the container then you can remove your container but in case you just want to remove the container without and in wasting time just use the force flag you need to just write docker container rm that means remove hyphen hyphen force or you can just simply write hyphen f and you have to give the name of the container which you want to remove from the node simply press the up arrow key you will get your older commands and just add hyphen f see now we have no containers running on worker one node let me open docker swarm visualizer uh, as you can see the new containers are started just right now after deleting the older containers let me check that they are whether a uh, new one or older one as you can see the ids are totally different from the previous one let me remove this docker containers which are created just right now and we will try to open docker swarm visualizer as soon as possible to see the empty node so in this way we have deleted the newly created containers and you can see the containers are again running up in my worker one node so this is the role of replicas if you're going to set the replica flag while creating the service the docker service in this way docker swarm provide high availability of the services high availability this simply means is to keep container running all the time even at the time of failure and this is made possible by just creating multiple instances of same container with the help of replicas so this is the one of the feature of docker swarm which is high availability of the services hi and welcome back 
In this lesson, we are going to learn about load balancing and rebalancing of Docker Swarm. Here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a new node into my Docker Swarm. And the only purpose of adding new node is to suppress the load which were there on my earlier running nodes. Okay, so do you think after adding new node into the Docker Swarm, the load which were there on my previous running node will be come down? The answer is no. Because whenever you're going to add new node into your Docker Swarm, it doesn't mean the services which are running on your earlier nodes will be shifted to their and the new the newly created node which you have added right now. So for it, you just need to do the forced rebalancing. Okay, so we're going to learn about the forced rebalancing as well, and also see that uh, how Docker Swarm uh, will manage the auto load balance things. Okay, so here we go. So to perform rebalancing and load balancing, I've just created the two nodes. One is manager node and one is worker node. Okay, and then I'm just going to create the service, a large number of service of same kind. Okay, let me show you. Just write Docker service create, and uh, here I'm just going to run the 30 instances of one kind service. Just write replicas there, and. Uh, replicas and equal to 30 okay so here i'm just going to create the 30 services for ping command which will going to run inside that alpine image it will take time because 30 services are very large in number so uh, what will happen when you're going to execute this command it will just run the 30 services but you have right now only two nodes so what docker swarm will do is it apply it's one of the main feature the key feature which is auto load balancing okay so it will distribute 15 15 services and two of them okay suppose i've just created 30 services right now so it will distribute 15 services into my manager one and 15 services will be going to run into my worker node okay just creating right now wait for a while until all the services are in running state so this is the future of docker swarm that how it do auto load balancing okay now let me check all the services are running or not you can find there are 30 services i hope and some and they are running either on worker one or either they are running on manager one all are in running state and uh, they are running since 20 40 seconds let me clear this now let me inspect oh no let me take the count that how many services are running inside my worker one node mm, let me add some more thing just add wc hyphen l you can see that there are 15 services are running right now on my worker one node and you know that i've created the 30 instances of services that means simply means that on manager one 15 services will be running there okay this is a simple linux command if you know the basics of linux you can easily understood that what i did right now wc just means the word count and hyphen l means that number of lines there and putting pipe is just like uh, the output of one command it will be the input of the the command which are come after the pipe okay now 
I'm going to add my worker to node into the docker swarm docker so for it you will require the join token for worker which you can take it out from using the command join token copy this command and uh, paste it over worker to node so what will happen when you are going to add this second node into your docker swarm then also it will not going to shift all the services into worker 2 okay let me add this worker 2 into docker swarm first you can see only two nodes are there one is manager and one is worker 1 there and now i'm just going to execute that command that was not copied earlier let me copy this command again and paste it here and just hit the enter button yeah now this is showing the message that this node joined as a worker there now when you're going to execute this node ls command you will find that there are two workers right now and one manager you can see on docker swamp visualizer as well that there a newly created node is there but no services are shifted there it doesn't mean that docker swarm doesn't do that auto balancing thing it, it will not come into auto load balancing it will come that this docker swarm will not have the ability of auto rebalancing okay so this is something different like load balancing something else and auto rebalancing is something else okay now you can see there are 1550 services are running on manager one and when and worker one but zero services are running on worker two so what i'm going to do i'm just going to do a forced rebalancing okay and to do forced rebalancing you just need to use that docker service update command okay let me show you just write docker service update and we need to use that id of the service which we created and you have to run this update command in undetached form okay and at last you just need to write hyphen hyphen force so it will take a quite big time so either you can wait for a while have a cup of tea or coffee and because it will going to take a lot of time okay so let me continue this thing in my next lesson okay hi and welcome back so it took eight minutes to converge 30 services which we have so once all the services were converged I checked my docker swarm visualizer and I found that my nodes were rebalanced now let me show you now you can find that there are 25 services are showing on my worker one and manager one now you might be thinking that there were 30 services and i'm saying that now services are rebalanced so what is 25 and 25 there actually the it also consists of the services which are running and services which are shut down okay i will exclude it afterwards here you can find only the services which are running there but on command prompt when i checked i found 25 services there this simply means that it calculated the both services the services which are either shut down or either they are running okay let me show you without adding filters yeah you can see there some services are shut down and some services are running there so the services which were running earlier that were shut down and it was rerun in such a manner that it should be rebalanced on 
three nodes okay so let me figure out how many services were shut down mm, I think it should be capital not in small letter yeah s should be capital there not small and i have written a small letter so that's why uh, zero were coming in case um, to avoid this such problem you can use even hyphen i filter also which simply means case insensitive but for now i'm just going to paste this shutdown there and you will find that there are 30 services are shut down so these 30 services are those 30 services which were running earlier okay this then if you're going to check for manager one and manager and uh, on worker one you will find that 15 services on manager one and on 15 services on worker one the services were shut down okay so what happened exactly it shut down all the services and rerun all the services on three nodes to rebalance it okay so this is how we forcefully rebalanced our node okay now let me do some maths here okay so let me run all the commands one by one and see that how many sh services were running and how many services are shut down okay actually i'm just re-verifying it okay so it will be cool to view all these things on command prompt using some linux skill there and just adding some filters there here hyphen v simply means that you just want to omit that string there okay hyphen v simply means it will give the running services only not shut down services okay so i think this is the formula which we can apply here and this is how latest services are there on manager 1 10 on worker 1 10 and on worker 2 as well 10 services are running each of them before understanding kubernetes you must know about container technology you have developed an application now it's time to run it on production but you caught with some warnings and errors you search for solution into Developer performance like Stack Overflow or even ask to your teammate, but at the end, you still don't have the solution. According to the survey, it is found that about 70% of issues are related to what problems we have right now. To rescue us from such a problem, Docker comes into the picture. Docker is one of the popular container technology. With Docker, you pack your application with essential libraries and dependencies into a container and makes your deployment process easy to run anywhere. Anywhere, I mean in production environment as well. This time, when developer team gives the code to the ops team to deploy the application and it works, voila! With Docker, you save your precious time, your resources and lots of money so this is all about docker like container technology suppose your application becomes too much popular and to solve that problem you added more and more containers and now to manage a containers will be impossible for you there kubernetes comes into the picture and helps you out managing container workload and the services Hi and welcome back. The objective of this lesson is to create a Minikube VM. So what is Minikube? Minikube is a tool which helps you to create a local Kubernetes cluster on your laptop or PC. It is especially for those who are new to Kubernetes and for the developers as well who want to try run their deployments on a daily basis. With the help of Minikube, you can create a single node cluster. So, let's create one. To start a Minikube VM, you need to use this command, Minikube to start. Okay, 
if you want to use other kind of drivers by default it is VirtualBox if you want to set this Hyper-V as your driver so you can give it in this manner okay other than Hyper-V and VirtualBox you can use Docker, KVM2 as well as Podman so in this way I have created Minikube VM okay it will take two to three minutes to have one okay so after creating the Hyper-V VM it will prepare the Kubernetes and then it will going to verify the Kubernetes components and enable some of the default add-ons on it after it you need to check that it is working or not so just write kubectl get parts and here you will get no resources found in the default namespace it simply means that our mini cube is working fine okay let me show you one more thing this is hyper-v manager window and here you will see that a virtual machine is running which is mini cube and here you will find lots of options like connecting the vm turn off shut down pause start and many more options were available on that window you can also find that all kind of options here in the command line as well i will discuss later on before it let me ssh this vm the username for this vm is docker and the password is tc user okay it is a default one you can change later on once you have logged into, into the vm okay so this is a mini queue we have now connected to the mini queue vm let me see one more thing like who am i yeah it's it will give the username of the vm which is docker and it is a current directory where we are just now so here you can find that docker is already installed in it and let me check that kubectl is there no kubectl is not only docker engine is installed on this mini cube vm okay let me exit this vm so this is how mini cube vm looks like we will discuss some more details about mini cube in later on section so for till now keep learning and keep exploring also guys welcome back by now you have learned about the architecture of kubernetes as well you have created a cluster using mini cube now in this part we're going to deploy our first part part is simple a basic unit of kubernetes that you need to be deploy into the cluster okay so for it you need to create a pod yaml file and inside it you need to specify kubernetes deployment objects there are four basically total objects one is api version other one is kind third one is metadata and the fourth one is spec let me give you a brief introduction about each of them first one is api version it specifies the api version of the kubernetes deployment object there are three kinds of api one is alpha one is beta and the last one is table you are going to use table api version throughout the series another kind of object is kind it describes the type of resources which needs to be created in our case we are going to deploy a pod so here we will write pod inside this kind section there are lots of resources and objects which is supported by kubernetes like config maps deployment pods services replica sets replica controller and much more another object is metadata it is a set of data to uniquely identify a kubernetes object so here you will get four important things like labels name namespaces annotations will be there inside this metadata section and at last we have spec here we will going to declare the desired state and the characteristics of the object we want to have suppose if you need uh, two replicas or three replicas so you need to mention the number of replicas here in the spec section then you need to give the selectors because to have a replica set you need to give the selector option as well so that it will match the label with that part and it will set the replica for it and at the last you need to 
specify the template this template could be uh, information related to container and port informations environment variables which are related to containers so all the information related to containers will be here inside the template so this is all about kubernetes deployment objects so now we're going to focus that how you can create our first part file so inside api version i'm you need to just write v1 and as it is a part so inside kind you need to write part and in metadata you need to give the name of the part and labels namespace annotations etc so here i will going to add the name of the part and just going to add a one label to this part okay and annotations and much more things will be added in later on series now you need to specify the container information here here we are going to deploy a uh, nginx part so you need to give the name of your image here okay just write container name will be your part name and you need to give image name nginx colon latest so what will happen it will going to pull nginx image and it will be of a latest version okay so this is a simple part definition yaml file and through which we will going to create our first part so let's do first you need to write this command kubectl create hyphen f and the name of the yaml file okay if you want to do some kind of changes after creating the part then you need to use apply attribute there instead of create okay let me write kubectl get parts you will see that the containers are in creating state let me wait for, for a while it will going to create within a 30 to 40 seconds because firstly it will going to pull that nginx image and then it will going to start so you can find here that our part is at running state and here one is your name of the part it's ready because there's only one replica and it is in running state and number start is like if your part is having a problem having an error so it will reboot your part and the number will be reflect here and the age is a time that how much time before part is created now i'm going to expose this part to the real world so that anyone can access this part i mean we're going to expose our part to the outside world okay so you need to use this expose command and you need to give the name of the service okay and there are actually three kinds of services which we will discuss in this series one is cluster ip one is node port and the third one is load balancer so here i'm just going to use node port because this cluster ip is just for internal networking and this node port and load balance is used to for the communication to the outside world okay so here i will be using node port and you can use load balance as well but here i'm just going to use node port very easy to implement so you need to write kubectl expose then the name of your part and then name of the service and you need to specify the port at last you need to give the node port okay you will find that the service is now created okay now i will use miniqueue service command okay and this miniqueue service command will only work on a command prompt with our admin privileges okay you can't run this miniqueue command without admin privileges okay so you need to open that admin portal and you need to run that command so just simply write miniqueue services and the name of the service so here you can see it opened that page automatically so by this way i have exposed my part to the outside world okay so here you will find the namespace which is default then there's name of your part 
service and the target port and this is the URL and this URL is our mini cube IP let me show you see the URL IP and the mini cube IP are the same hope you understood in my next lesson we will going to learn some more topics related to kubernetes so for till now keep learning and keep exploring what's up guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to talk about namespace so what is namespace namespace is simple a virtual cluster inside your cluster it allows you to organize your resources okay so it is very important to have namespace when there is two or more teams working on the same cluster or you want to organize your resources in such a manner like some resources are related to database some resources are related to monitoring some are related to your front end and back end and so on things so it will be very helpful for you so that you can easily check out where you want to do some changes or you want to some things here okay so this is the importance of namespace so without wasting time let's create a simple yaml file of namespace here again you require that that same template which i've used for creating the simple part here you need api version kind the metadata spec is not there here okay so let me remove that yeah and one more thing i will going to use the same yaml file which i did earlier for creating a simple part and just i'm going to add a simple namespace tag there okay so this is my template for okay i'm just going to add this here uh, for namespace the api version will be v1 and the kind will be the namespace because we are going to create a namespace either you can create using namespace with the help of yaml file which is the most suitable thing but if you want to create your namespace without writing a yaml file you can simply create it using your kubectl create command okay so it's better to create namespace or any kind of other resources or objects related to kubernetes with the help of yaml file it will it will be very good for you okay so this is a simple namespace yaml file and here inside that metadata you need to specify the name for your yaml which is um, you can put anything okay and you need to add the labels so let's write labels there and the labels title okay so this is a simple namespace yaml file and now I'm going to execute that kubectl create hyphen f and the name of your, your AML file. This hyphen f means the name of your file. Okay, so just simply write kubectl create hyphen f. Um, let me copy this file name from here. Okay, let it be lazy to type the whole name of the file. <laughs> so this is uh, our YAML file. Okay, there's one error in our YAML file. Let me see. Mm, it's talking about the namespace validation namespace okay here we got it okay here you need to copy the complete label i did only nuggings okay you need to add that app and the nuggings okay now let me save this file and yeah it will see automatically this inside your pie charm yeah your namespace is created okay and if you want to check the namespace you can just type kubectl gate ns a short form for namespace so here you will see there are lots of namespaces are were already available like default and cube public cube system and so on things i will going to discuss each of them later on in my theory section so let me leave this for for a while so this is our part yaml file and here i'm just going to put the namespace okay so so you need to keep one point in mind that while working with yaml file you need to worry about that identification if you put a wrong identification then it will not going to work for you okay so this is the name of our namespace as you can see it is just be below the label section it will be in, on the same level okay so here i put it down my namespace here and yeah our first part with namespace is created now let me check that 
there will be any part created or not and you will shock like you created a part and when you type this command kubectl will get parts and your part is not there why it's so so you again create your part but it says that this part with the same name is already exist so where your part is running why you are not able to see them let me explain you because you have created the part with a uh, other namespace and when you cube when you run this command cube it will get parts it only talks about a default namespace okay so let me type the name of our namespace here inside here and here you will see that our part is running and it also shows the age okay so this is how your uh, namespace works okay so uh, let me describe my namespace and here you will get all your events there okay and there are lots of lots of informations and you can see them and understand that what's uh, all about the namespace okay so i will not going to just describe each of them because it is same and i did earlier okay so here inside cubes it will get parts hyphen hyphen namespace equal to your namespace name you got your part okay now one more thing i'm going to do here i'm going to show you that how you can change that current context which is default or you can say it which is mini cube to uh, other context which is our part with namespace our namespace so the once you will type this kubectl get parts you will get your part there okay but this thing i will do in my next lesson so stay tuned okay what's up guys welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create a namespace and a part with that namespace so once you did all these things then you thought that you just have a look how our part is working and you just had that command cubes it will get part and you didn't get your part so here i'm just going to show you that how you will going to make this possible that you're going to write you see it will get part and you will get the part here there are five to six namespaces are already there okay and uh, now what i'm going to do just let me show you that my part is running or not just write cubes it will get parts and use this namespace attribute and the na name of your namespace and you got your part but now that our task is just when you're going to write cubes it will get part and you will get there okay so now i'm going to use this cubes it will config command through config command you can set the context okay because uh, in namespace when you create a namespace it will just create a new virtual cluster and to use that virtual cluster you need to set the context okay so till now there's no context for our no our namespace so you need to view your config file this is the configurations of your Kubernetes and here you will find the all users name or cluster names and lots of lots of information you will find there so what is our task from here you just need to pick up the name of your user which is minikube okay because at the time while creating a new context for our namespace you will require the username okay so just now you know what is your username okay so let me show you this is our current context which is also having the same name minikube okay but now we are going to change we will going to create a new context within that same user minikube and then we will going to use that newly created context through which we can get our parts okay just write kubectl config set hyphen context and here you need to give the name of your context just write part with ns a part with namespace a simple name so there you can identify it okay now just give the namespace attribute and the name of your part namespace which is part with the namespace copy this and paste it here and then you need to specify the name of user and we already knew which is minikube 
and uh, and the cluster name as well which is uh, again i think mini cube only let me check it our cluster name is also having the mini cube its namespace showing default okay and because by default we use the default namespace okay now we change our namespace to public namespace we need to change this okay i hope you got the thing which i'm explaining okay so yeah you need give it the name of your cluster and given the name of your user which is mini cube on the both the sides now you have created a context and uh, now you need to use this newly created context for it you need to use this use context command and after you need to write that name and we are now selected to that newly created context now let me see this is our current context okay the newly created context and now you will get all your part just typing the cube serial get parts earlier it was not there now it is there just because we created a context and set uh, to that context so this is all about namespace namespace is very very useful thing and i think that you must use namespace while having a small project or you are having a large project it doesn't matter that what's the size of your project it's a good habit to use namespace okay so for till now keep learning and keep exploring what's up guys friends welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to talk about replica controller replica controller and replica sets having the same purpose but the only difference is the selector replica set uses a selector and replica controller doesn't so here i'm just going to deploy replica controller and then my next lesson i will talk about replica set and for the detailed things i've already discussed like replica sets replica controller and the deployment here in this i'm just going to do the practical things okay so i will not going to waste a lot of times like again saying same okay so this is our part definition only and here i'm just going to add some of the things the first thing which i'm going to change is the kind here the kind will be replica controller okay and uh, you know that replica will going to replicate our parts so in you need to give the template for your container okay so inside your replica controller you need to give a template for your pod okay and inside pod you know that container runs so i'm going to copy this and paste it here so it is a template of our pod it is the same thing okay which we did earlier that downside from the spec we having the all the same things which you will require to execute a simple pod okay we have the containers, we have the labels, mis metadata and all things. But we don't hold that API version which is already defined and the kind because it is a replica controller. So you don't need to provide the kind there. Okay. So here you will see that there are two spec. One spec is dedicated to replica controller. Okay. And one spec is there for our part. And to be exact, for the container which we're going to run inside the part okay so don't be confused okay so the template is the same that api version kind then there is metadata and your spec and here what is happening that replica will replica set controller will going to replicate the parts so inside the means you need to give the part details okay so you have to provide all these things inside your template so this is a very very basic yaml file to create our replica controller previously it was used but now we have replica sets so we prefer replica sets over replica controller but this irony 
that uh, I, in the next lesson I am, when I will be describing the Prakar set then I will say the same thing but this time I will say replicas we, we need to use deployment over replica sets okay so leave this apart this replica set and replica controllers are the same things and when you deploying the applications you have to do some kinds of updates and rollbacks so on things for it you need to use that deployment but if you don't have such thing just use replica set or replica controller okay so you see there's no replica controller by default no resources and we don't have any kind of parts there okay so now i'm going to execute this command q set will create hyphen f and the name of our yaml file and copy this yaml and paste it here and here i'm just putting down the three replicas so what will happen it will going to create three replicas for my part okay as you can see that it is creating the container and one container is already running okay both the parts um, not both uh, all three of the parts are running straight okay so in this way i have created our replica controller let me delete one of my part and see how our replica controller works so we have deleted one of the part okay it will take 20 to 30 seconds to delete a part okay so the, our part is deleted it did uh, faster okay so you can see that we have uh, another part the age is nine second yeah and uh, this shows the high availability of the services that's why we use replicas okay so this is the major purpose of using replica and other thing for which you need to use our replica is like one is um, high availability okay and uh, other one is like load balancing suppose you have three parts so the load will be across the three parts and if you want to scale you can easily scale up your replicas as well okay so this is all about our replicas replica controller okay what's up guys welcome back here in this part, we are going to discuss about replica set. Previously, we have seen replica controller and its use cases and advantages. Replica set having the same thing. All are the, the things which I told in my previous lesson we are going to apply here as well. And here the only difference is the selector. Actually, replica set will replicate that part only which it attached with okay here in the definition file of replica set i'm just providing the selectors for nuggings app so the part having the nuggings will going to replicate only but in case of replica controller all other resources which are available will going to replicate here only I'm just giving the selector information and that targeted part will be duplicated. So let me execute this replica set YAML file and you will see the same thing. Okay. So, but it's a part of the Kubernetes. You must know about replica controller, replica sets, as well as deployment. And there are much more options available like diamond sets jobs your bare parts or various other options are available but they have other kind of use cases okay most prefer method is deployment and okay and it is very important to know replica set and replica controller by dealing with deployment okay so let me execute this command replica set yaml and our replica sets are created now you will find that inside part on inside rs you will get that your replica set and inside parts you will get your parts so these are the latest one okay 
all are running right now hmm. so this is a replica set okay now I'm going to delete one of the part as it will also do the same job which replica controller does if you're going to replicate that okay so this is how replica works and in the world of cloud computing and other stuff the thing is the application should provide high availability and must have the load balancing option so these two majorly requirement will be fulfilled by using the replicas okay and kubernetes is only used to deploy it's a container orchestration so it is a part of kubernetes okay each time whenever you're going to create it will have the same name the part has the sorry the replica set name and at last it will have the unique id to identify that part okay now i'm going to delete the delete what replica set only so all the parts which were available right there will be deleted as well okay so now i'm going to check also i'm going to delete for replica controller as well so now we don't hold any kind of parts let me show you out that's right gives it will get parts and you will find that they all are terminating state okay so there are different states are there and do the part like first we're going to create the container and then it will be running and at last it will terminate in between there are two more states but i don't think so it will going to discuss because most of the time we only see these three status and if the container is having some kind of problem you will see error and cache back half okay these two stairs will be there but generally we don't have to see them we just see the like, container is creating and it's running and at last it is when you deleted the part it will be at terminated state so this is the running states of the parts so this is all about replicas and in my next lesson we will be discussing about deployment so for till now keep learning and keep exploring What's up guys friends welcome back here in this lesson we're going to talk about deployments earlier we have discussed replica sets and replica controller with the help of them we can easily scale our part easily as well as it gives the power of high ability so now in this part we will be discussing about deployment when you look the yaml file or deployment and the yaml file for replica set you can't figure out the difference okay but here when we deploy the replicas set or controller whether so it will going to create the parts okay but in case of deployment when you deploy it it will not create the parts directly it will create the replica set first okay and after it will going to create the parts okay so suppose if you want to do some kind of updates into your deployment so it will going to change the replica sets accordingly and parts will be created with the new replica sets so it is very interesting thing right the updates could be like you want to change the image or you, you want to change some parameters through command line arguments and so on things so when you're going to update the part specification the deployment will going to create a new replica set with that updated part specification and the replica set which were created earlier will be deleted and the new replica set will be there with the new part specification so this is how deployment works okay here in the yaml file i just did the two changes like when the kind and uh, where you need to write the deployment and in metadata I just did a uh, change in the name okay 
So by default, when you see on my dashboard, like there's no parts, there's no replica sets, and there's no deployments. Okay. So but when we're going to create this deployment, then it will going to create the part. We're going to create the replica sets, and after it, we're going to create the parts. Okay. So how it looks like? Let me show you. See, parts is creating right away, and uh, here the replica set. And it is the the sets is going to be complete. Okay, now see our replica set is also ready, and our deployment is also ready. So it, in this manner, deployment works. Okay, and last thing is it also creates a service as well. Okay, while creating the deployment. So this is all about deployment and replica sets. In my next lesson, we will do some kind of scaling and do some kind of updates into the deployment. So for till now, keep learning and keep exploring. What's up guys, welcome back. In my previous lesson, I have shown you how you can create the deployment. Here, our task is to scale up and scale down with respect to the load. Okay, so the first thing either there's two options to scale up your deployment or scale down your deployment. One is in the YAML file, you can change the number of replicas. If you want to increase, you can increase the value. Or if you want to decrease, you can decrease the value. But the best way is to use this kubectl scale command. Here you need to write kubectl scale and deployment and the name of your deployment and with the numbers to what extent you want to replicate your part. So here I have replicated my part from 3 to 10. Okay. So it will take time to create new parts with the same configuration which we have already provided. So as you can see, five out of tens are ready right now. Okay, now it is seven, now it is eight, and uh, now it is nine, and I think within a second we will have yeah. Now we have ten replicas of Nginx part okay so in this way i simply scale up my nginx part with respect to meet the load and traffic okay now if you want to scale down you can just simply execute the same command instead of 10 just put down 2 which is less than 3 because earlier there was 3 replicas now i'm written down 2 so now it will going to scale down and there will be only two parts will be available. So this is the one of the features of Kubernetes which is scaling up and scaling down. Okay. Hope you understood. And in my next lesson, we will going to focus on how you can do auto scaling. Okay. So for till now, keep learning and keep exploring. Also guys, welcome back. Here in this part, I'm going to talk about auto scaling feature, which is provided by Kubernetes. Kubernetes provides a series of features to ensure that your cluster have the right size to handle any kind of load, whether it's high or whether it is low. Okay, so here in this part, we're going to talk about auto scaling feature. There are two types of auto scaling. One is horizontal and other one is vertical in horizontal what we do either we add or remove parts or add or remove nodes but in the vertical scaling we actually modify the cpu or ram resources allocated to that part or not okay so these are the thing which you must know without i proceed to give the practical on auto scaler you must know about horizontal scaling as well as vertical scaling horizontal part auto scaler which is i'm going to show you the demonstration how you can put horizontal part auto scaler in short 
you have listened a lot of time horizontal pod auto scaler so here what i'm going to it will going to scale the number of pods which are available in the cluster to handle the current computational workload okay earlier in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can use the scale command to scale up and scale down your resources okay but here what will going to happen in the auto scaler it will see that what are the uh, cpu utilization or memory utilization and accordingly it will going to increase the parts or decrease the parts if there will be a high computation or memory utilization then of course it will going to create a new parts to deal with that heavy load but in case you have already 10 parts is there but there's very very low cpu utilization so this is a wastage of your resources so here again auto scaler comes into the picture it will going to decrease the number of parts even it can gives to one as well okay so this is a feature of horizontal part auto scaler and you this hpa checks continuously the cpu and the memory matrix which is generated by a matrix server which you need to add on this matrix server okay and i will going to show you that how you can put this matrix server okay so another kind of is vertical part auto scaler and here you need to use that vp recommender okay but here in this lesson i'm just going to talk about hpa horizontal part auto scaler okay so let's do it check the cpu utilization or memory utilization you need to use this command top qc to top it will going to give the current status of your resources okay so now what you do you need to use this command to check the current status of your pod or your node okay so i'm just going to check my pod status so simply write qc to top pod and the name of your pod okay suppose this is my part and uh, i'm going to paste this here there is an error that metric api is not available so this is a metric server it's talking about metric server i told you this metric server is something which going to give the report of the current status of the parts or nodes to the hpa means horizontal part auto scaler so you need to write mini cube, mini cube add on list to see the numbers of see the number of um, add ons available in Kubernetes. And if you know already that what's the exact name of your add on, you can simply put uh, enable add on. Okay. But in case you have a little bit confused in the name of your add-on, you need to use this command add-on list. So it will give the list of all the add-ons available. Okay, so here you will find matrix server which is currently disabled. So what I'm going to do, just write minikube add-on enable this matrix server. Okay, now it will enable our add-on. As you can see on my screen, there's a message the matrix server add-on is enabled now and here cross check you can check that it is now enabled so this is how you can enable add-ons which are there in your communities okay and this matrix server is located into the cube system namespace okay so if you write cube to get part you will not going to get that main that matrix server you need to give the name of your namespace cube system and you will get the pods running into that name system okay not sort form is working here so simply write namespace okay namespace these are current pods which are running under cube system and here you will see that our matrix server is running so i triple cross check actually when i checked on the list then here and one more time so this is how you can enable the matrix api now what i'm going to do i'm 
going to auto scale my deployment okay and here i will going to give the minimum replicas and the maximum replicas to deal with the load okay so simply i'm going to check the current status of my part it's showing zero percent cpu utilization okay so once i will going to in do enable this auto scaler will do something that it increase the percentage of the part okay which is zero right now okay leave this apart now we have to focus on auto scaler command here you need to write kubectl auto scale then you need to give the name of the deployment okay which is my first deployment okay this is this chair now you need to give the maximum cpu a maximum sorry maximum and minimum replicas number okay so minimum 10 and maximum 20 okay so it will check continuously with the helper matrix server at what is the current status and it will do accordingly so if the there will be more load then it then the power will be 20 if it will be less load then it will be at 10 okay now i'm just going to put the cpu percent if i did zero okay it will not work for zero okay one will be i think useful for us okay so we need to do something with the part so that its percentage of cpu increase from zero to one okay the best way is to um have an interactive and in shell okay you need to interact with the part and the, here this is a shell of my first part okay so let me download something here so that the cpu utilization may be increased okay hopefully i think there will be change in the percentage and uh, it is before it was zero now it is having some kind of numbers okay now let me check the parts and it's great firstly there was only two parts but to deal with the load which is five percent right now so it increased the number of parts to 10 okay so this is how hpa works okay so hope you understand how you can enable this auto scaling feature into your kubernetes deployment it is very helpful it saves a lot of time a lot of resources as well lot of money as well okay so this is all about deployment autoscaler hpa so for till now keep learning and keep exploring